Alright guys, your boy the Anthony of Break Room Blitz. Now, usually don't really do videos like these, but hey, it's entertainment. It's uh, kind of Hollywood, so uh, let's just kind of talk about it. Now, a few days ago, Cat Williams, which everyone knows Cat Williams, he just run his, he run his mouth a lot. You know what I'm saying? He uh, he liked to think he speaks, he speaks his truth. Let's say that. Um, I like Cat Williams. I actually never seen a bad Cat Williams special. I've never seen like a mediocre Cat Williams special. Uh, it's pretty much his his track record speaks volumes. So, of course, everyone wants to hear what he had to say. So he was on a radio show. Uh, I forget the name of the radio show. But uh, if you know about this drama, then you're going to know what radio show it is. Um, he was on a radio show and... He pretty much made some controversial comments about some comedians um, that are out here that are, that are doing their thing. Uh, some I like. Some, mm, I don't know. Not so much. Uh, but from his comments, I guess he, I guess The Breakfast Club, if you guys don't know what that is, you got to look that up. The Breakfast, Breakfast Club, their show... Uh, I guess had his video on on their radar and radar and uh, Charlemagne gave Donkey of the Day to Cat Williams, um, somewhat of because he was uh, I guess saying that he was fabricating some of the things he was saying. Uh, other ones he just felt like he was hating. Um, so I'm just going to address some of the things that was said and kind of give my personal opinion about it. This video might be controversial. I don't really care. But, uh, so I'm going to get a little deeper than I usually do in just the regular um, movie reviews. Because uh, I'm very shallow on that one. But, so anyway, let's just jump right into it. So, he said that he had the most stand-up specials of anyone in history alive today or dead now that's where he probably messed up at was the or dead i think alive he probably does uh he has 10 specials that actually came out and from imdb i was seeing some others like four other specials that didn't seem to come out i don't believe but it was filmed he got paid for it and he got the credit for it whether or not the distributor wanted to put him out, for what reasons, I don't know. But uh, he was pretty much saying that he has the most. He's close. Uh, George Carlin has 15. Now, you know, who knows what kind of fact-checking or whatnot. You know, his maybe his manager said that he was close. You know, but he didn't have a number one. But he's up there. Uh, he also said he had the most, you know, most highly rated stand-up on Showtime. I couldn't find that. Um, I'm not really, I don't really care about that. Because um, that, being the most highly rated doesn't necessarily mean it's the most watched. Because if you have a big name that says they're going to do something, doesn't mean it's going to be good. It just means every, everyone's, you know, you piqued everyone's interest. So, you know, when... Charlemagne gives him the Donkey of the Day for that. I'm like, well, you didn't have nothing else to give Donkey of the Day of, so you actually put Cat Williams as Donkey of the Day. To me, wasn't Donkey of the Day worthy? But then I don't even really like Donkey of the Day because, well, I don't really like Charlemagne. Let me just say, let me just put that out there. Charlemagne seemed like a little punk ass, someone you can't really depend on, like. He can never, we can never be friends. You know, he's a smart brother. You know, he's a polarizing brother. Um, you know, successful brother. That's all well and good. But as far as his opinions and his uh, perspective of things, I don't really care for because I, I look at it as a, uh, a punk ass, bitch ass type of point of view. So we would never be friends anyway. <laughs> Uh, but he gave, he gave, uh, Monique Donkey of the Day, which, to me, Donkey of the Day should be just, like, ignorant-ass people, 
someone who just says something that's just like way out of line, uh, someone that uh, maybe hurt someone, uh, something like that. You know, something that's just like very impactful. But these are mostly just opinions that Cat Williams is giving. You know, he was a little wrong with the facts a little bit, but uh, I'm pretty sure by the time his career is over, he's going to have the most stand-up comedies, okay? So it'll be true, you know, a few years down the line when we watch this video or we hear that video again. Um, then he said, Gerard Carmichael, no one's going to watch your special. They're gonna, so the topic was, you know, these people who are blowing up are blowing up for other reasons than actual talent. Uh, now, I like, uh, what's his name? Uh, Gerard Carmichael. I like that show, The Carmichaels, one of my favorite shows. I like the humor. I like the actors that were in it. I like him. Um, yeah, I'm going to just leave it at that. As far as an entertainer, I like him. Now, what's going on underneath, I'm not going to get into all of that. But I like Gerard Carmichael. Um, but most people, especially in his... Um, I guess, ethnic group, don't know who he is. You know, uh, he didn't come up in the ranks of, I guess, most black comedians did. Uh, which is in black movies or some type of black comedy uh, stand-up specials or whatnot. You know, like uh, Comic View or Def Jam, laugh palooza things like that. Like, he didn't come up those same routes, you know. Uh, and when black comedians get famous and they don't go those same routes, black people tend not to validate them. Like when uh, Big Perm, Big Worm, uh, oh, what's his name? Big Worm from Friday. When, uh, whatever his name is, whatever his name is. When he was saying that Dave Chappelle really ain't that funny and we never was really checking for him, that's a real thing. Black people was not checking for Dave Chappelle before that show. And it was really like the second season of the show. Because then he started bringing in, you know, uh, black actors and musicians that, that, you know, people know. That, you know, black people know. But we weren't really checking for Dave Chappelle, you know, back in the day. Because he didn't come up those same routes. Now, he did do, uh, he had like a few minutes on Def Jam. But uh, he wasn't a recurring, you know, he just didn't, didn't stay in that lane. So we didn't really know him like that. Well, same thing for Gerard Carmichael. Uh, same thing for... Um, uh, Lil Rel, which I like Lil Rel too. I'm not I'm not trying to say, you know, Lil Rel ain't nothing. Because I do like Lil Rel. I like him on, on the Carmichael show. I liked him on uh, Get Out. I liked him on... Uh, he has a new show. I saw the uh, little, little preview for that slash pilot. Uh, I forget the name of it, but he has a new show coming out. And I, I, liked, I liked it. It was cool. The lighting was kind of whack. But I like him as a, as a, as a person. But... Uh, so what Cat Williams said about him was that he was ugly. So he's not going to really, he didn't deserve to be a star. There's other reasons why Hollywood is making them stars. Even uh, uh, Hannibal Barbaris or whatever his name is, he's uh, used him as an example too. In which I don't like Hannibal Barbaris or whatever his name is. I don't like him at all. He's not funny. And he is hard to look at. I mean, he's ugly in the mug. So what what Cat Williams is actually referring to, which is why I don't like when the Breakfast Club gives out Donkey of the Days all the time, is because they don't really they're a very shallow, very, very shallow radio station. The people they bring on might be a little deep, but them personally are very shallow. Now I like the show. I like the show. I just don't really necessarily like Charlemagne. But uh they don't bring people on as that deep. But they're, they're, well, they do bring... Ha! Ah, they're not that deep. So they're not able to really look into what Cat Williams is actually saying to get a better understanding. Uh, so there is a trend in Hollywood. So when you, when, you, when you have the white actors, you know, you get the sexiest ones, the most charismatic ones, most good looking. So you get your, you know, your Brad Pitt's, your um, uh, Leonardo's, you get your um, 
you know, just your, your sexy, you know, men who other men might want to be. You know what I'm saying? But when it comes to, even with the women too, the women are always skinny and slim and pretty. Uh, not my type, but that's what they project on the, on the screen. Uh, but when you get black people, uh, especially nowadays, you get the skinniest, the scrawniest, the ugliest, the most, uh, I guess, unattractive black people. And they put them up, you know, with, so that way they don't seem as if uh, the studio or the director or whoever's in charge are racist. Uh, they're like, well, we filled our quota. There's a black person right there. Let alone, it doesn't matter if we aspire to be like them. It doesn't matter if we like their style. They're just like, well, there's a black person. But the, all the white cast is going to be on point. They're going to be people that other people want to be like. But with the black people, that's not really necessar <clears throat> necessarily the case. They will put up the weakest, scrawniest black people. You can look at, uh, for an, an example, um, maybe The Walking Dead. Probably about 90% of the black men on that show were not someone that anyone would ever respect. Uh, now, there are maybe a couple that we might, um, but uh, for the most part, absolutely not. Um, there's all type of examples, and a lot of times what uh, Hollywood would do is instead of putting a black man, they'll put a black woman there. And uh, that's more propaganda. It's more gender-based. Uh, now, I love my black women, you know, but there's definitely a pattern where they take out the black guy and you put the black woman. So that way, no matter what we watch, we're not going to see any masculine energy, anything cool to aspire to. Um, we're going to, unless it's BET, watching music videos, other than that, and even that's getting real feminine when it comes to the black men. Uh, so what he's saying is, what Cat Williams is saying is that there's an agenda to put those, you know, quote unquote unattractive uh, black men up there, quote unquote, you know, uh, uncharismatic. If that's the word, uh, black men up there. there. And then there is, there's a reason why Black Panther was historical. Because we've never seen that many black people positively, uh, masculine, uh, not simping, not whining, uh, not just like being victims. Everyone was a manly man. The women were nice looking. They were strong. They were powerful. They wasn't being no hoes or sluts. You know, it, it's a, that was historical because of that. Because of everything else in Hollywood. You might not even have realized it. See, I know all this stuff already. So, I see it all the time. And I point it out to my boy, Don. You know, uh, we don't talk about it on the channel. But this was a scenario where it needed to be talked about. There are agendas. Um, and there are certain quotas that Hollywood will make. But they will f they will fulfill them in the most low common denominator -y way. You know, uh, they'll take the... Worst looking dude, the skinniest looking dude. Uh, for okay, uh, for instance, Power Rangers. Power Rangers made the black person blue. He was a blue ranger now, and we all know no one wanted to be Billy. No one on the earth, no, <laughs> any real masculine man anyway, didn't want to be Billy. Uh, we wanted to be Zach though. Zach was cool. He had the moves. You know what I'm saying? You know, he had the, the dance moves and with, mixed in with the karate. You know, he had the, the high top fade, you know. He had, his 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 uh, helmet was dope. Like, you wanted to be like Zach. But they flipped it and made the black person the scrawny, uh, whiny, crybaby one. The one that no black person want to aspire to. No one's going to be like, oh, he cool. Now, I like that he was smart. But you can be smart and cool. I mean, that's been proven uh, many a times. You know, so the fact that he couldn't be smart and cool, no, I wasn't really feeling that. Uh, so that's that's an example right there. 
Uh, now, if you haven't seen it, then that's on you. But there's a, there's a ton of examples. I didn't feel like getting them all out. But that's the point he's making there. So it's not, to me, you have to know these things. You have to know. And then all this stuff is written. This All this stuff is written. It's not like I'm making it up. You know, they wrote what they were going to do, you know, to the black communities when they turned on TV, which is why, again, which is why Black Panther is such a historical thing, because we've never seen nothing like that before. You know, uh, so, and then, you know, there's so many, you know, I guess, heartthrob uh, white actors. When you look at, like, the black ones, what you get, like, The Rock, Will Smith, maybe, uh, Vin Diesel, uh, maybe Morris Chestnut, maybe. Uh, that's like still current back like back in the day you can mention some more but I'm talking about like still acting doing their thing that's pretty much it everyone else are just goofballs and Rock has been in a dress he's, he's played a homosexual character uh, Vin Diesel walks around in dresses and purses in real life um, let's see Will Smith always doing them sappy simpy movies you know, you don't really do any action movies anymore. Um, and you don't really see more Chestnut that much. You know, he's on shows, but he has, he's on a new show, I think on Hulu or Amazon. I forget the name of it, but they didn't even promote that he was even in the show. I had to find out through the doggone trailer. But anyway, you know, so there's there are agendas. Whether or not you agree with me, go look it up. Go research Another agenda is they will pair. They you you will rarely see in a movie a black couple. You'll see like uh, a black guy who has no girlfriend, no significant other. You might see him be gay. That's the other one. That's the other agenda is if he's a black person on the show or on a movie, he's gonna be the gay one or the dead one. He's either gonna die first or he's gonna be gay. One of those. Uh. What's another agenda? Oh, and then they'll have the black woman always paired up with the white man. Uh, that's in commercials. That's in movies. That's in TV shows. Uh, but you will rarely see, unless it's a black show, uh, you will rarely see a black man and a woman that are functioning like actual, like a, a proper couple not like Empire. That's not a functioning couple. They are... That's a whole other show with a whole other agenda. Uh, but anyway, not that. But a actual loving couple. Um, there is a new show that I do like. If you guys haven't seen it, check that out. Called Love Is... And I think Blank. But Love Is. That's a really good show. That has two black people coming together. Uh, which is kind of cool. But other than that, you just don't really see it. Like, there's, there's these recurring uh, themes... Not saying that I'm not talking in absolutes. I'm not saying that every single show, every single movie, but it does happen. And Cat Williams is aware of it. And uh, like everything else he says, it becomes controversial when you say things like that. Um, then you talk about Tiffany Haddish, and so which goes to the agenda. He said the only reason why Tiffany Haddish is so big that. Or is because she publicly says she wanted to sleep with a white man. She was married to a white man uh, back in the day, um, and she said she wanted to sleep with a white man with a uh, what's his name? Um, uh, um, oh, what is his name? DiCaprio, Leonardo DiCaprio. She said she wanted to sleep with him. Um, now that's an agenda. Like, if you, if you don't want to be, if you're black and you don't want to be with your own, you're going to blow up. That's what happens. But if she would have said, oh, I want to sleep with Morris Chestnut, or even I want to sleep with The Rock, it wouldn't have been as big of a story. Um, so, maybe The Rock, maybe, because it's The Rock. But any other black actor... Uh, it wouldn't have really been a big deal. If she said, I wanted to sleep with uh, Ryan Coogler, it, it, and he wouldn't, it wouldn't have been a big deal. you know. But since she said that, 
you know, she kind of just kind of blown, just blowing up out of nowhere, you know, and I get it. You know, I'm, I'm happy for her. I think she might typecast herself though, but you know, I am happy for her. I do think that, um, maybe Monique should have gotten a little bit of a, um, you know, and when it comes to like what these different comedians should and shouldn't have and shouldn't, shouldn't do, it's really the work that you put in. I don't know the work that any of them put in, but I, I've enjoyed Monique growing up. Uh, she's very funny. She's a very good storyteller. Um, so I get why Cat Williams is saying that Tiffany Haddish, you know, just got, um, I guess, surpassed, you know, everyone else. You know, they everyone else getting overlooked for this new chick. But that's kind of how Hollywood is. And, and when you act ratchet... And that's another agenda. If you act in ratchet as a black person, white people find that uh, intriguing. And oh, she's so funny when she's doing her yeah, or at a or whatever she be doing. They think that's funny. They think that's interesting. You know, and they're like, oh, let's just put her in the movie. You know, but if you aren't, you don't have a buzz, and you're not really out there for the white people to see, then you do get overlooked. You know, they're not. Like 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 Cat Williams said, Netflix is not calling no one and say, "Do you want to do a special?" No, you call them, and they will assess whether or not you should get a special. Now, I just think that Tiffany Haddish is doing too much at once, uh, as far as like your her longevity. But hey, get your money right now. Why why they offering it? Get it, I guess. But you better be saving because I do feel she is going to typecast herself and she's not going to be able to do any other role but that. And she is a smart young lady. I do know, you know, she's very intelligent. It's just that she don't ever show that. It's not the part that anyone ever cares about. So I can see where, what Cat Williams is talking about. Uh, and then, the uh, reason why I wanted to do this video because everyone was responding. So we got the Breakfast Club responding and we got... Uh, Kevin Hart responded, and he's just saying that, you know, he's like, why, why we gotta have all these haters? Why, when someone is doing good, there's always someone that want to hate. And I can see how it could be hate, because he didn't like congratulate these people, which is why I'm trying to congratulate as I'm going. But there is an agenda, there is a theme, if you want to say, uh, there's a pattern. And I have noticed myself, someone who is a, uh, a black man, who is a strong black man, who is a positive black man, who likes to see awesomeness from other black men on the screen, you do not see that. Unless it's The Rock, Vin Diesel, and Will Smith. You do not see that. At all. Even, uh, what's his name? Terry Crews to be doing all that. Ha ha ha! Doing all that. He's still goofy. He's still goofy. He's not someone I would ever, like, aspire to be. Do I wish my muscles was like him? Maybe. You know, but as far as, like, his personality, the things that, you know, he portrays, no, he's not, uh, he's another goofball. He's a, a joke on, on, on screen, you know? So, uh, that's that's what I'm that's what I'm trying to say that there is this agenda and there's not a lot of black men on the screen that we be like man that dude is tight right there you know what I'm saying and 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 white people they get to do that now I'm not saying that you know everyone gets to do it but there is a thing you know in this country has always been this clash of white versus black you know what I'm saying so I'm just gonna be honest about it. Uh, and I just don't think that Kevin Hart was correct in his uh, assessment, I believe. It wasn't thoroughly thought out. I, but I get it. I know where he's coming from. And they, those are probably his friends. I'm sure if anyone talked about Melody Camacho, uh, Cat Williams would go to bat for her. So, I mean, I get where they're coming from. But, you know, it was a deeper conversation than most people know. And that's why it's going to be a controversial one because they're gonna be like, "Oh, I can't believe he said that." When really, this has already been going on. It's just no one is sitting down and be like, "Hmm, 
There's a gay black man. There goes another gay black man. There goes a silly, stupid black man. There goes a, a gangbanger black man. No one is counting or tallying up how many negative images we see on screen of black people. You know, uh, and if we ever, if we did, I don't count them and write them down, but I do point them out all the time. Uh, but I don't ever bring them up. Maybe I should bring them up. Maybe I should bring them up in our reviews. But yep, yeah, I saw this agenda. Saw this, this and that too. Maybe I should do that. Maybe I think I will actually, uh, because sometimes it's hard. Because I want to, I want to say things, but it's hard for me to really, you know, vocalize it. But um, just to sum it up, wrap it up. He wasn't trying to hate. You know, he did give, um, you know, some people some props and just speaking their names really uh, puts them on the map. I mean, I know a lot of people do not know who Gerard Carmichael is, so. Uh, but I wish they did. I wish I wish more did because he's a. I feel like he has a great fresh mind with creative thoughts that he can you know put the paper and put to the screen, you know. So I wish more people did. So hopefully you know that gets people to look him up. Um, I think that it's just a, a deeper conversation than anyone or most people are ready for, and I think the media knows it, so they kind of like spin it, you know. But he wasn't saying anything that was just like off the wall, super hating. He was just really speaking the truth. And his truth, per the perspective of black people, you know, because all this has been planned. All this has been writing out what they were going to do, you know, how they're going to uh, have us with our music and the stuff we watch. There's a reason why BET is going strong. There's a reason why it's nothing but negative hip hop. There's a reason. It ain't because oh, that's all we want to listen to. I don't even listen to hip hop because of that. A lot of people don't listen because of that. You know, so it ain't all of us. You know, it's not something that we want. It's just something that they push. They just push this negative, you know, uh, images about us. So, all right. If you don't know, then you're gonna have to do some research, or you can just hit dislike or you know comment why I'm wrong. Uh, doesn't matter to me. It's all good. I know what what the truth is. You know, I know what the plan was or still is. So uh, you gotta just get with the plan, man. And I wasn't. I mean, and I didn't even go into like who's a Luciferian or nothing like that because that'd be probably way over anyone's head. But there is agendas and stuff like that. So all right, guys, let me board the anthem. Let me know what you guys think. Please like, share, subscribe, and comment. If I made you laugh or smile, hit that like button. If I made you think. Go ahead and comment. I will definitely, you know, address your concerns with you. Uh, and if you just want to see my feel our, our videos every week, go ahead and hit that subscribe button because we will pop up a few times a week, baby. All right. Peace. Well, I got to turn the camera off, but you know. Y'all know what I'm saying.